In this video, we're going to make Home Assistant aware of weather alerts from the National Weather Service using an integration from the Home Assistant Community Store. So stick around because we're about to automate some boring stuff. What's up everyone, my name is Jeff. One of the things that I think every smart home should do is let you know when it's not a good time to leave the house. Just what do you think you're doing, Dave? There is severe weather approaching. Like when severe weather is approaching. So this week, we're going to add that functionality into Home Assistant using a integration that I found on the Home Assistant Community Store. Unfortunately, the services used in this integration are specific to the United States. But for those of you living in other parts of the world, there are definitely parts of this integration that you could use with your local weather service. Okay, weather alerts. I've always lived in parts of the United States prone to severe weather. And unlike Texas, where tornado sirens are a thing, where I live now, there aren't any. So I'm using Home Assistant to warn me of severe weather. This integration leverages the National Weather Service API, and it's free. So let's jump into how we set this up. First thing we need to do is install the Weather Alerts integration in Hacks. So for that, we're going to head to Hacks and then Integration. Then we're going to click the blue Explore and Add Repositories button. Then we need to search for Weather Alerts. When you find it, click the Install This Repository button. Then click the other Install button. When it's done, you'll have to restart Home Assistant. Once Home Assistant is back up, head back into the Hacks integrations and you should have a Weather Alerts integration listed. We're going to click the three dots on the card and choose Information. Here, we need to scroll down a bit. Before we can continue, we're going to need some information from the National Weather Service. The code for our zone and our county. Both of these are based on your state and county, and to find them, we need to click this link to alerts.weather.gov, which will take us to the National Weather Service. Here, just find your state and then click on the zone list. I'm going to use Kansas because I know they have some severe weather going on as I record this, and that would allow me to show you what this integration can do. So, in our zone list, we need to find our county. In my example, I'm going to use Finney. So, the code for Finney County is KSZ063. In this, we just care about the 063. Now, we need to back out and go to the county list. For Finney County, the code is KSC055. Again, we only care about the 055 here. So, back in the docs, be sure you copy the weather alerts sensor, and then open your configuration.yaml file. I'm using the file editor add-on to do this. If you already have a sensor heading in there, just drop this in that section. If you don't have one already, just include the sensor colon and then paste it into your configuration. The platform is weather alerts. State should be state code, KS for this demo since I'm using Kansas. Zone is the number we grabbed earlier, 063. But here we don't include the alpha characters or the leading zeros. County is 55. Before we leave this file, we need to make one more change. Come to the top, and if you don't have a Home Assistant section, add one. Under it, we need to enable the Packages directory using this configuration. What this does is tell Home Assistant to read any YAML files that we place in the Packages directory. Then, save the changes to your configuration. Next, we need to create that directory packages. So in the File Editor add-on, just click the New Folder button and give your folder a name. Now, reboot. When you come back up, you should be able to head over to the Developer Tools and check to see if this integration is working. You should now have a sensor with the name of your county, so in my case, sensor.finny, and you can see there are four active weather alerts. Next, head back into Hacks Integrations and open the information for weather alerts again. This time, we need the YAML pack info. Head to the Sample Package YAML link. This sample file contains the basic sensors and automations we need for this weather alerts package. So we're going to click on weather alerts underscore one dot YAML. We're going to select raw, and then we're going to select and copy everything. Then open up your Home Assistant configuration again, navigate to the packages folder, and create a new file. You can name this file the same as it was in the sample, or like me, just create it as weather alerts dot YAML. The file name here really doesn't matter. Then, in the file, we're going to paste the contents we copied from GitHub. The next step is to rename that main sensor, because this package is looking for a sensor named weather alerts underscore one. 
So we're going to head over to Configuration, Devices, Entities, and search for our county. Then we're going to rename that sensor to sensor.weatheralerts underscore one. When you have that sensor renamed, restart Home Assistant. And when you come back up, you are basically done. As you can see, this integration is already providing notifications in the notification panel of weather alerts. In this case, there's currently a tornado warning. And while this is helpful, I'm not always staring at my dashboard, so I want to send these notifications to my phone. And I want to add an audible tornado siren in my house, if a tornado warning is issued. To do that, we need to make some modifications. So let's jump back into our weatheralerts.yaml file. Before we get too far, I suggest moving the main integration out of your configuration.yaml and paste it into this weather alerts package. This just makes sure that all things are contained in this package and it's easier to update in the future in my opinion. Of course, this is pure automator's choice. Just be sure not to leave it in both places. Next change I made was to add some extra attributes to the weather alert sensor because the basic sensor just has warning count and watch count. And I want to have separate counts for tornado warnings, freeze warnings, and thunderstorm warnings so that I could have specific automations for each of those conditions. Making this change now means that when we write our automations in the UI, we can use the attributes as trigger and avoid getting Jinja with it just to evaluate whether the alert that was just sent was for one of those conditions. Again, automator's choice here. But to add the attributes, you just have to copy the warning attribute, and then you only need to change two things. The name of the attribute, like tornado warning count instead of just warning count, and this little bit here that searches for a phrase in the alert. Since this one is looking for tornado warnings, this is what I included. But you could search for any weather alert, just try to make it specific. I also added a couple of specific watch counts, too, for tornado and thunderstorm watches so that I could use those in the future. Okay, now that we have our attribute set, let's scroll down to the input text entities. I really like this piece of this integration, and I think I'm going to reuse this pattern in other parts of Home Assistant. Since we're dealing with weather alerts, and sometimes those alerts get resent multiple times, this integration uses text helpers to note which alerts have already been sent so that this package doesn't spam us with weather notifications. If you want to send notifications in multiple ways, I suggest creating one of these text helpers for each of those methods. To keep this simple, I just left these as is for now. Since I don't use push bullet, I'm going to repurpose the push bullet stuff. So I need to update the automation that sends the push bullet notifications. Here, I just replace the push bullet service with the notify.notify service, which will handle my notifications. Before we continue on, let's walk through what this automation does. When the number of alerts changes, this automation triggers and goes through some condition checks. First, it makes sure that there are active weather alerts. Then it checks to see if the alert was created recently. And then finally, it checks to see if the alert ID has already been stored in our text helper. And if it hasn't, our automation can fire. Then it calls the notify notify service that we just changed and sets the value of our message. Since there could be five active weather alerts at any time, this part ensures that each one will arrive in the notification if it exists. And then the last thing it does is add the ID for each of the notifications that are active to our text helper. So in future events, this notification won't get resent for those alerts. If you want to build your own automation, I would ensure that you include this last part just to update the value of a text helper with your alert IDs, just to ensure that you're not resending your notifications. And lastly, I created a tornado alarm automation. This one triggers when our tornado warning count attribute is greater than zero. And then it makes an announcement in the master bedroom. Next, it turns on our tornado alarm input boolean, which fires the tornado siren. Then it sends a text notification, just in case we're not in the house when this happens, followed by a verbal announcement in my son's room. I actually covered the tornado alarm automation in a previous video on creating a simple siren automation. If you want to set up an automation like that, check out that video. But now, when severe weather threatens, I'll get text notifications. And in the case of a tornado, a siren will play loudly enough to wake us in the middle of the night, which has already happened once and is quite effective. If you want to take a closer look at the changes I've made since I recorded this video, there's a link in the description to my GitHub repo where I share my Home Assistant config. And that's it. Weather alerts from hacks installed and configured with some customizations in Home Assistant.
From here, you could get busy creating automations specific to your weather conditions that you want to alert or to notify people of. And that's all the time we have for this video. If you found this video useful, hit that like button and consider subscribing to my channel for more home automation content like this. Until next time, go automate the boring stuff. Thank you.